welcome to the first session where we will share how we can use indian knowledge systems for creating a global well-being curriculum this is a synopsis of the course and its lectures the course is about knowledge systems this is a vast topic and covers many concepts these concepts are across time subjects etc etc they give you an overview of the body of knowledge that leads to wisdom whenever during this course you feel that you have lost its direction come back to this lecture to regain it it is a summary of its ideas we will start with the objective of the course measure every sentence that is shared using one acid test does it meet the objective the objectives may seem to be many but in the final analysis they should lead to only one experience within you that is the experience of oneness with all of humanity take it easy it is a slow process haste leads to waste this oneness is not a physical experience and the mind is used only to capture the spirit so though the mind is used it is beyond the mind this spirit led to the mantra of indian knowledge systems vasudev kutumbakam it enabled a vision of universal unity what we do not know is explored in this course humans have sense organs and perception based on them but so do animals some animals have more sense perception better sense perception than us horses elephants and dogs can smell and hear better than us despite these limitations we don't experience being limited or experience a sense of inferiority from the animal kingdom is this because humans also have a mind can we ask a question is there something beyond the mind too scientists use the mind and say that they do not know answers to some questions for example what existed before the big bang what is beyond time and space energy powers every electron and atom what could be the source of this energy is visualizing this energy beyond the mind's capacity energy driving everything inside every atom must be the universe's power house imagining its extent is beyond this mind and the senses will science be limited if it uses the mind and the senses what did the mind do the mind split the atom after discovering its energy indian knowledge systems had a different approach after its discovery it inferred that there is tremendous energy within the smallest atom it wanted to explore and discover the source of this energy could an infinite source of energy powering all unravel the mystery of the universe and of individual life how to research the source of life energy universe ancient indians bravely asked this question 
without hesitation. Can we tap the powerhouse? Instead of being delinked like a generator or an inverter from the powerhouse, can we live in an experience of oneness with its infinite power? It was described as the power of a thousand suns. Its infinity was called divinity. Atoms express its oneness in the universe. Indian knowledge systems, which we will call IKS from now on, sees one infinite energy hidden in atoms powering all phenomena. It calls it divine as its infinity or divinity is beyond the capacity of the mind and the senses. IKS questioned, what energy gives fragrance to flowers, life to human bodies, power to the galaxies, etc. Science takes this power as given. It uses it without comprehending the one truth of its very many expressions. How did Indian knowledge systems, the IKS, see the truth of the expression of this power? They observed that from the human body till processes in the universe, even in galaxies, this one phenomena was always expressed, is always expressing this one power in one way. It used three processes, creation of say new galaxies or new cells in the human body, their preservation right from this human cell to the preservation of galaxies for varying durations of time and the third process was their ultimate creative destruction. To make this conclusion simple for all, they gave it names of three gods, the creator, the preserver and the destroyer, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. This power, Shakti and the three processes are like four legs of a chair on which the one infinite source that the mind cannot comprehend sits. It is beyond sense perception and mind's capacity. It can only be experienced. This is what they discovered. They sought its oneness experience. This is the one way of seeing the truth in IKS, Indian Knowledge Systems. It can be expressed in many other ways too. Vasudeva Kutumbukam is one way of expressing the truth in IKS or Indian Knowledge Systems. Vajra from Buddhism, Kevala Jnana from Jainism, etc. explain the universal truth in other ways. This course uses the body and the mind for finding an experience beyond both of them. It does this by a voluntary decision by all to speak the truth in life. Why? Let us find out. By asking a simple question. Could the mind prevent the 2020 or the 2008 crisis? Both of these crises occurred because the truth of the deadly virus was hidden, was not clear to all. Just as the truth of the misuse of derivatives was hidden from innocent investors, if the truth had been visible to all in the very first instance, Everyone would have taken precautions from the virus and the investors would not have invested in the derivatives. So the invisible spirit of truth should be the basis of human interactions. 
just as invisible atoms are the common basis of the universe. The spirit or power of oneness is beyond our sense perception. Indian Knowledge Systems or IKS dives into its search using the senses first. Knowledge beyond sense perception is called Paravidya. Ways of experiencing universal consciousness which are beyond senses and mind leads to one thing that powers all, knowing which all else can be known, that is Indian Knowledge Systems, IKS's Para Vidya. In IKS, knowledge relating to the physical reality based on sense perception and the human mind is called a Para Vidya. It tells us how to live in the world using the senses and the mind. Different branches of knowledge physics, chemistry, botany, economics, music, etc. are applications of Aparavidya. Their origin in IKS lies in Paravidya. Paravidya, Aparavidya emerge from the Vedas and the Upanishads. Let us peep into what they do. The Vedas and Vedangas in the IKS, for example, can be interpreted to teach knowledge of the materialized aspect of one universal consciousness. Later texts, the Upanishads, deal with consciousness, transcendent Brahman. But the interesting thing is, the Indian knowledge systems makes things very simple. Paravidya is taught based on the knowledge of Aparavidya, the materialized consciousness of Brahman. A flow of Vidya that came from Para Vidya uses a Para Vidya to teach it. This naturally leads to the knowledge of the transcendent Brahm consciousness, the Brahman, which is the goal. Para Vidya creates awareness that transforms attitudes and motivation. A Para Vidya is a study of limits, dharma. The highest concept of consciousness being experienced as selfless love is an awareness in which to live life, but it must be expressed within limits of righteous conduct in a physical, material world. The force of flow or the vahini of knowledge, which is vidya, that takes us from sense perception to transcendental knowledge is called vidya vahini. It manifests selfless love's spirit shown in actions of caring. Its education is therefore educare, evidence of its capability of transforming individuals in society is shared a little later. We begin ab initio using IKS's Sehna Vavtu approach. It explores the path to the goal for individuals and society. Let's start from the society's beginning. Laws govern society. It progresses and its progress emerges from sciences and engineering. Literature captures its ideas, etc. etc. What is a term that is used in all these subjects which leads, which means that we start from the beginning? The word in all these disciplines used is ab initio. This is the way investigation starts in the current knowledge system. As we explore Indian knowledge system, they start each class with the Sehna Vavatu Mantra. It has a deep meaning, but another lecture of mine in another course explains it. Ideally, we too should do it, but there is no point doing it without enjoying it. Hopefully, this course will make us ready to enjoy its meaning. For extreme simplicity, let us start by saying that we are investigating knowledge systems together. So, I will learn from your questions while you may learn from my experience. This is cooperation, 
not just putting our heads but also our hearts together to find out what can help all of us. So let's define the course objective. It is to find solutions for the current global issues that face society. To identify a knowledge system that solves current global problems is the first objective. This knowledge system should create a desire to investigate phenomena and teach how to investigate them. It should also teach how to comprehend them and act. It should create skills useful for work and create skills for living life. The skills used for work should not clash with the skills for living life. Finally, each student should discover balance within oneself. The nature of this balance should create balance in society. Its concepts should lead to individual well-being and social well-being. The course should make the conviction emerge that individual and social well-being are not an either-or situation. It should become obvious to students that both of these are complementary and one leads naturally to the other. The knowledge system's concepts should make us reject ideas that lead to unethical and immoral behavior, social and economic disorder, chaos, crime, corruption, etc. How will we proceed to meet the objective? We will check a possible inference. Will the new efforts succeed if concepts of current knowledge system are same as the chosen one? Then evidence of Indian knowledge system creating well-being in a microcosm of society is shared. Sense perception can verify this. Based on the evidence, we will try to draw an inference, that is, of the impact of Indian knowledge system on subjects that plan for prosperity, that is, economics and management, and those that enable it, that is, subjects like mathematics, sciences. This inference emerges from a question. Why, despite being so well-meaning, the current knowledge system could not deliver well-being? We use Indian knowledge system's methods of comparison on current knowledge system to conclude that approach of four human values of Indian knowledge systems includes concepts of current knowledge system. We apply the Indian knowledge system method of contrast between the current and the Indian one. This contrast shows how the Indian knowledge system's concepts awaken the voice of conscience. This leads to a voluntary desire to use righteous conduct, which leads to well-being. What is a course? There's an old saying, life is a game, play it. The game of golf has a golf course. What can we learn from it? A course as a noun, the Cambridge Dictionary says is, and I quote, gradual development of something or the way something happens or a way of doing something, unquote. The Indian knowledge system's course has one goal of developing character. It's gradual development, the way it happens and the IKS way of doing it, the Indian knowledge system's way of doing it is shared in this course. The word course is also used to describe a golf link. A golf link has 9 or 18 holes. Just like sub-destinations to a final one in life. The course of life too keeps changing just as the T, the fairway, artificial hazards and putting green. Indian knowledge systems divides life into four such ashrams. 
the responsibilities of playing the game of life. Changes in each subsection of life, just as it does on a golf course. For the tee, the fairway, the hazards, for putting, golfers use different clubs. Of course, an expert may use one only. The way of knowing which club to use, where and how to use it needs skill and practice after knowledge. For the game of life, the way of knowing is the first step. We see current knowledge system and Indian knowledge systems ways of knowing to find out which one can create well-being. Let's discuss the course idea. The course idea is to explore what is a knowledge system. Knowledge system is a way of seeing, comprehending and knowing the truth. To comprehend and know the truth, current and Indian knowledge both have ways of knowing. Both use sense perception. Indian knowledge systems also use comparison, inference and more. IKS, Indian knowledge systems, uses a practice of speaking the truth for investigating truth about everything. The truth about oneself and also the truth about phenomena in the universe. This and other such practices lead to awakening the inner voice of conscience. The voice of conscience guides human action towards righteous conduct, the final goal. The ways of knowing of current and Indian knowledge systems are also the method of knowing this course. The course demonstrates their application. Using the sources of knowledge and ways of knowing, the global goal of creating well-being curriculum is sought to be outlined here. The course first sees evidence based on human sense perception. Using current knowledge systems for 150 years has created it. OECD changed the goal of education. Also, problems of mental health are being termed by academicians as being of epic proportions. Our current knowledge system has eight ways of knowing. To, to compare the two knowledge systems, we will take the popular international baccalaureate curriculum called the IB curriculum of the current knowledge system. This we will take as a standard to check IKS, that is uh, Indian knowledge systems against it. The IB curriculum is followed in 159 countries and has agreements in USA, South Korea, Japan, Spain, etc. Its website has a testimonial by Stanford University, USA. The current knowledge system using the IB curriculum uses eight ways of knowing. Sense perception is the first among the eight ways of knowing. The other seven are reason, emotion, faith, imagination, intuition, memory, and language. It may be concluded that reason, emotion, faith, imagination, memory will be strongly influenced by the first way of knowing, that is sense perception. If evidence of senses presents the truth in one way, reason and emotion too will follow. This will influence faith and memory. Current knowledge systems ideas are built on the evidence of sense perception. This leaves two out of eight ways of knowing of current knowledge system, which are language and intuition. Indian knowledge system is based on Sanskrit language. Its grammar text Ashtadhyayi is linked to likened to a Turing machine, which is an idealized mathematical model 
that reduces the logical structure of any computing device to its essentials. Therefore, using this criteria, this way of knowing of Indian knowledge system is better than current knowledge system. The other comparison comes to intuition, the last way of knowing. Usually, intuition is without evidence. It may give an inkling of the cause or about something that is likely to happen. Indian knowledge system, instead of intuition, depends on creating an ability to generate insight. Insights are based on total clarity about the nature of any or all phenomena. Indian knowledge system has four important ways of knowing. Terms of the Vedic stream are used here. Words are only a means to show concepts. Concepts in many streams of Indian knowledge system show commonalities. Look beyond the words to learn the concepts. IKS does not use ways of knowing that are linked to each other. Each of its ways of knowing are independent of each other. As the language it developed was advanced, it did not include it in its way of knowing, as current knowledge system has done. Insight replaces I as current knowledge system's intuition in Indian knowledge systems. Again, it is not a way of knowing. Its ways of knowing are designed to give insights as a natural byproduct. Indian knowledge systems makes concepts simple. It too starts from sense perception, just as current knowledge system does. So let's consider its four important ways of knowing. These are called Pratyaksha, Pramana, Upamana, Pramana, Anumana and Shabda Pramana. Loosely translated, Pratyaksha implies what sense perception takes as the truth. So, Indian knowledge system doesn't deny the current knowledge system's approach. It just takes it a little further. Sense perception is something that humans share with the animal world. In fact, some animals have better sense capacities. So, it figured out. Its other ways of knowing are designed to declare the distinction of humans from the animal kingdom. Its approach to way of knowing is different. It has six ways of knowing. To keep it simple, we study only four here. Using its approach, you can self-study the other two. The sessions will demonstrate the use of methods of knowing of knowledge systems. Upamana implies using the method of comparison. We will use it to decide which knowledge system to choose by seeing which one can solve global problems. A. For this, we will compare evidence of impact of Indian knowledge system and current knowledge system in creating value. Secondly, B. We will also compare the difference in approaches of current knowledge system and Indian knowledge system. Then let's look at Anumana, which implies inference. We will use this to infer if ideas of CKS, current knowledge system, will succeed. If this is unlikely, we will use inference to study it. We will use inference to study the impact of IKS, Indian knowledge system, on ideas that plan for pro progress, subjects of economics and management, and ideas that enable progress, that is sciences and mathematics. Secondly, we will infer why current knowledge system or CKS deviated from the path so that we can avoid the same pitfalls in the new knowledge system that we select. How will we demonstrate IKS or Indian knowledge system way of knowing that is Upaman? We will compare evidence of impact of society of CKS and IKS. The evidence of 
करंट नॉलेज सिस्टम कैन बी जज बाय द कंक्लूजन रीच बाय द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक कोऑपरेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट द ओ ई सी डी अ ग्रुप ऑफ द वेल्थीएस्ट कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आफ्टर द टू थाउजेंड एंड एट रिसेशन देर रिपोर्ट कंक्लूडेड दैट थ्री थिंग्स हैव अकर्ड साइमल्टेनियसली इन द लास्ट वन फिफ्टी ईयर्स and these things are that prosperity has been created technology has grown and education has spread but they found that despite the spread of education and technology social pain has been created this has led them to question education they now want education to create future progress with well being they plan to create a well being curriculum by 2030 however for last 15 years work on a well being curriculum has been funded by 500 campus grants in the usa were these able to create well being eminent researchers conclude that mental health is at epidemic levels in upamana we see evidence of indian knowledge system for comparison with current knowledge system we will see evidence in a hamlet in south india where three de- decades ago or four decades ago a school was set up where current knowledge system was used but with indian knowledge systems today from primary to phd all education is given free of cost its students and those who have imbibed the ideas of ancient wisdom serve in a couple of super speciality hospitals where all treatment including surgeries are given free of cost over 5 million free services of the highest global standards have been given till date and this includes free cardiac surgeries neurosurgeries pacemakers 326000 free surgeries 26 million free diagnostic tests etc have been given the mobile hospital covers 440 villages Not only this free drinking water facilities have been provided to 1600 neighboring villages giving relief to 3 million people including those in four cities this is evidence of well being concepts of indian knowledge system here will will only use interpretation of texts that led to this so the concepts that we are going to use to demonstrate how indian knowledge systems can create well being will use all the interpretations of indian texts used by those who studied in these schools and those who studied these concepts which has led to the evidence that we are sharing today now we come to inference anumana we will infer why planned changes in current knowledge system may not succeed what could have deviated current knowledge systems in the last 150 years we will see how ideas of reductionism scientific materialism and philosophical idea of sense perception being the human essence may have made the current curriculum value neutral this is despite the emphasis on ethics in the curriculum design always the ideas of shaping a well-being curriculum for the last 15 years revolve around bringing theory to practice btop the evidence of indian knowledge systems has the opposite approach just like the yogic headstand 
it uses practices as a basis of applying theory in life. It starts with the practice of speaking the truth to build character. Without character, it states, all theory will fail in practice. The OECD, the World Economic Forum, etc. now expect education to create values, character, transformative competencies, etc. Evidence of the last 150 years is not able to demonstrate how current knowledge systems will succeed in creating them now. Do we need a different set of practices of Indian knowledge systems to rejuvenate education? So the inference continues. How are Indian knowledge systems and current knowledge systems different? What may be the likely impact of IKS on the curriculum ideas of subjects? The 19th century gave us ideas of reductionism, scientific materialism and the philosophical idea of sense perception being the human sense. The 20th century has given us fantastic new ideas. These can easily merge into concepts of Indian knowledge systems. Only the merger of both has not been visualized. For example, the truth of reality has been explored by quantum physics. Despite many eminent researchers acknowledging Indian knowledge systems, eminent researchers in quantum physics acknowledging Indian knowledge systems, the application of advances have not given a guide on how to live life, how to use quantum physics to live life. This was always the first focus of any knowledge in Indian knowledge systems because it felt that knowledge should be applied. Let's take another example. Maslow gave a human need hierarchy. This hierarchy states that after needs of food, clothing, shelter are met, we seek to fulfill social needs, etc. Finally, humans seek to actualize their full potential or what he calls self-actualization. The evidence of society where basic needs have been met does not show a predominant desire for self-actualization. Indian knowledge systems can fill this gap between theory and practice by building character and suffusing human values in graduating students. Six philosophies are found in both Indian knowledge systems and current knowledge systems. We will see later the criticality of philosophy of a knowledge system. The six major philosophies of current knowledge system are Essentialism, Progressivism, Perennialism, Existentialism, Social Reconstructionism and Behaviorism. The six major philosophies or the Shad Darshans of the Indian knowledge system are Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sankhya, Yoga, Purva Mimamsa and Uttar Mimamsa. The six texts of Indian knowledge systems are based on the Vedas. They are also based on non-belief. They are also belief, uh, based on inner vision. They explain incidents and events that pertain to all the three times of past, present and future. They have taught us how to lead a good life. They explain the nature of the human mind, which is responsible for all intelligence, intellect and discrimination. What do the six philosophies of Indian knowledge systems seek to do? What is their goal? They help humans actualize their potential through the last way of knowing. And the last way of knowing is Shabda Pramana, the final way. It develops character based on four values. What develops human character? This journey starts with four human values that are the basis of Indian knowledge systems. And these values are truth, 
righteous conduct, peace and love. All religions and philosophies that make a civilization last share these values. Indian knowledge systems, ways of knowing, explore not only the truth of the outside world, but also make the student explore the truth about oneself. The instrument that explores creation is sense perception. What if the instrument measuring reality does not have the range to measure it? Can reality be understood in that case? Therefore, beyond sense perception, self-discovery is useful. Once our inner nature is explored using the practices of Indian knowledge systems, of which speaking the truth is the very first, then the practice of searching the truth in every situation becomes a habit. This awakens the inner voice of conscience, leading to righteous conduct. That is the goal. Indian knowledge system is application oriented, not theory based. Shabda Pramana is like Moses' Ten Commandments, the mantras of the Vedas, the ayats of the Holy Quran, etc. The revealed truth. Hearing the voice of conscience reveals that this revealed truth exists. It works as the voice of conscience within each of us. The revealed truth has guided humankind for thousands of years. We can't experience a black hole but accept that it exists. Is it then scientific to deny what the eyes cannot see but the inner ear can hear? It can hear the voice of conscience. If revealed truth has been misinterpreted by religion, conscience in knowledge systems should easily separate the revealed from the misinterpreted truth. This will restore the science behind faith because current knowledge systems also depends upon faith as a prime way of knowing. This course lays a deep emphasis on practice. Every attempt is made to make all the lectures very short. A five minute slot at the end of this lecture is being given for silent sitting. This is to enable the participant to mull over what is said. Whatever has been heard should be repeated in the mind so that it gets absorbed. Just as sugar is stirred in a cup of tea or coffee with a spoon, use the spoon of silence to stir the sugar of Indian knowledge systems in your mind. It takes some time for the tea or coffee to become sweet. Patience is very important. The perspectives shared in the course will seem meaningful only if such silent sitting is done to mull over what has been said. Else, the half an hour spent in delivering the lectures will be a waste of time. We welcome you to undertake an inner journey during these five minutes. Only then will knowledge that is outside you will become wisdom inside you. The time allocated for this is actually 20 minutes, not 5 minutes. The time should be increased gradually. This is also a time for the mind to take rest. In case it cannot do that, mull over whether the voice of the conscience has guided you at any time in life till now. We accept challenges for the physical body in games. In a gym, we can have a 20 minutes plank challenge. 
we may exchange challenges on the quantity of food we can eat. Can we go beyond such challenges to the second step of the Indian knowledge systems? Can we see if the mind itself can take rest and maybe stop working? Can we explore what will happen if it becomes zero? Remember, it is not good to challenge the mind. It rebels and makes you do the opposite of what you want it to do. It is far simpler to observe the mind. For doing this, first the physical body should move as little as possible. Observe the mind as it tells the body to move. You are not telling the body to move. The mind is telling the body to move. Observe the mind. Move away from the mind and see what it is forcing the body to do. Watch the mind as if you are sitting on a fan at a distance. When you are at home, Shavasana in yoga is a good posture for this practice. Try to first silence the body, then the mind. For those who have mastered this, they can try the next method. When you think of nothing, can you experience love without giving it a shape of a thing like your favorite food or a thing that you want to own or the physical form of a person? Can it just be love without an emotion to a person or a thing? Can it be love for the sake of love? How do you experience loving yourself? The purpose of this course is to help you discover yourself, that loving being beyond the body and the mind.